What's up, Influencer Nation? Jim Cavell here, founder. And as always, we love to talk life after sports. And today, we're with Lewis Neal. Recently finished his playing career at the college level with LSU, now with the Dallas Cowboys. But rare is it that somebody as young as Lewis is thinking as far ahead as he's thinking as far as life after sports while he's just starting his NFL career. So really excited about this interview. And I want to start, Lewis, with just your story. Tell us a little bit about coming up as a football player and how you ended up going from North Carolina, where you played high school ball, to LSU. Well, see, I'm from a small city, Wilson, North Carolina, where it's about 40,000 people and everybody knew everybody. So, you know, it was just a blessing to be able to be noticed out of a small city to you know, go to a high level school like LSU. But um, man, I always worked hard for it my entire life. And basically, you know, I grinded my, my own way out. And uh, I had offers from everywhere. My first offer was from NC State, which was in state. And that right there opened me up to more in life and gave me the confidence to know that I can do what I wanted to do and achieve the things that I wanted to achieve. And when I got that offer, um, it took off from that point and I was committed to Ohio State decommitted and went to LSU but um, LSU offer didn't come to you know the end of my career in, in high school but it was a blessing that it came at the right time and I took it and I love it ever since you know it's a um, blessing to be able to come from that school and you know I love the southern atmosphere and that's what got me at LSU I love southern it atmosphere. I love it Cajun convert Cajun <laughs> convert so oh, yeah. so going to LSU playing in the SEC is an amazing experience of course but it also puts you on a high level yes. where you're able to get a jersey that really means something. You can leverage it for a lot of opportunities. Right. In college, you started to think beyond sports in a lot of different ways. The Washington Post documented a story on you yeah. talking about trading currencies and investing into a barber shop. But I want to hear a little bit more about it from you. What did you start to do that made you think about investing your time beyond just practice and games playing yeah. for LSU? Well, um, I've always been self-motivated growing up, but basically um, my freshman year in college, um, well, I started investing in, in learning about it in high school in this class called AVID, and I uh, started with, you know, the basics. But uh, in freshman year in college, it, you know, tapped my mind that I needed to think about things outside of football because I wasn't playing like I wanted to. So me not getting the playing time I wanted just hit me hard and, you know, hit me, it, it got real to me real quick knowing that, you know, like what if I never play and I don't have nothing to fall back on. So at that point, I started working towards things to fall back on and, uh, and then I started getting the playing time that I wanted too. So everything started going <laughs> as well, <laughs> you know. Double dip. Yeah, right. So <laughs> since I was already, you know, thinking ahead early, that's what got me started early. And then everything started falling in place when it comes to playing time as well. And I played and balled out because I kept working hard at that as well. But then I had my businesses as well on the side, so I learned, you know, how to trade and all those things. It didn't happen overnight. It took me about a year and a half to, you know, fully master it. But um, I started thinking of things to invest my money in, and that's how I started, you know, diversifying my income. But um, also just, you know, thinking of creative ways and being an entrepreneur and being innovative. I always wanted to be innovative and create my own way, so that's what I did. And uh, everything's just falling in place. <laughs> well, what I love about that is, first of all, I'm, I'm in my 30s now. I played college sports. I did not think that way when I was playing college sports. So God bless you to think that forward, number one. But number two, just um, some of the talk you had there about it didn't happen overnight. Just like you didn't get to play big time college football, basketball, any sport at the big time level overnight. It took years and years and years for you to get there. Um, it also doesn't happen overnight to become great at trading currencies or wow. become great at setting a vision for a business and actually making it happen. It right. takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work and a lot of nights of no sleep. So those nights paid off and now I'm at where I'm at. But, um, you know, I had a lot of roadblocks and a lot of failures. And I guess the more failures you have, the more success stories you have at the end. And I always live by that. So anytime I struggle, I know it's a success story at the end of the struggle. So I just keep working no matter what when I do go through the struggle. So you develop patience and you uh, figure out your way in multiple types of extracurricular business activity while you're at LSU. Talk about some of the specifics of what you're doing. So you're trading. Right. I mentioned the barber shops. Tell yeah. them a little bit well, more about what you were doing. All right, so I um, they traded in the foreign exchange market and uh, took a while, like I said, and I you know I mastered it and you know took off from there. And now since then I got um, I started creating my own algorithms and things like that to automate my trading one day. But I uh, also got into the hair factory of Baton Rouge on Nicholson Drive. Um, it's a salon slash bar, you know, salon. We do men's and women hair though, so it has we do everybody 
hair, you know, diversified, so it really doesn't matter. White, black, you know, Asian, doesn't matter. So anybody can come in, you know, get a ten dollar haircut or whatever. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah, so that's two things right there that I started in college. But um, you know, as time kept going by, you know, I just kept using my connections and I started connecting with other people. So I connected with some developers as well. So I started my own developing company out of Dallas, Texas. Coincidence that I'm in Dallas, Texas now, right? Yeah, you already had started it before. Uh -huh. I think what's yeah. what's really cool about business is that in business, you learn, especially nowadays, that even if you're doing brick and mortar, right, um, technology is still involved, right? right. You're doing a, 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 hair, a hair salon, right? There's right. still technology involved in scheduling the appointment yeah. or whatever it might be. On the other side, uh, you've realized that even in trading currencies, you can automate some of your trading exactly. through technology. Exactly. So you created a technology right. shop for right. not only your businesses, but for other businesses out there that need a website, need custom software. Exactly, and app mobile applications as well, because I just created a robot that can trade successfully for me without me even touching the computer. So I can't wait to see where that's gonna take off and I can leverage that in a lot of ways and I plan on helping a lot of people out with that. Um, but that's not it, I haven't even you know, showed the world that yet. So that's just some insight. Yeah. Some, some uh, insight. Behind the curtain. Behind yeah, the curtain. Yeah. I like it. I like it. All right. So um, another thing with technology that you've been able to explore is um, a, a patent that you've oh, been yeah. pursuing. Right. And it's really interesting to me because on top of these other things that are a little more direct to revenue type opportunities, this is more of an IP play where right. you're investing in intellectual property that could be a huge opportunity for you huge. on the hardware side. Yeah, I got a patent on 360 Mobile Technologies and um, it's a huge opportunity for me because the demand for it is high. And um, basically, I got a patent for taking 360 pictures and recording 360 videos, live stream as well, directly from your phone. So imagine Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, going to your camera roll and being able to choose to take a 360 picture or record a 360 video directly. Not a 180, not a Panamera, right. 360, full view. So I take a selfie right here and it takes the behind me and in front. Right. So it takes a full 360 view or record a video. So concerts or any you know activities that I want to do. And now it's going to give people to you know another avenue to be photogenic. And I feel like I can license this out to Google because since they own Android um, or Metro PCS Sprint or any phone carrier or any phone company. And uh, I feel like a lot of people will buy it. <laughs> so when I hear all that, I think I'm a guy who has a lot of different things going on. I consider myself a high capacity guy. But for you, you go through at LSU, you end up getting on the field. You have a great career there, defensive end, really come out in a great way where you get picked up by the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Now you're in Dallas with guys like Jerry Jones. Mark Cuban, yeah. all these different people that you're now able to use your platform as a football player, yeah. and the fact that you have a jersey that a lot of people respect to get on the map and say, yeah, this matters to me and I'm gonna play hard for you, but here's what else I got going on. Can you make an introduction to Sprint or Apple or whoever it might right. be? I mean, it's just putting you on a map. Talk about how you've been able to use your platform as an athlete to now leverage it to get yourself in front of people for business? Well, see, one thing I always tell um, LSU athletes, don't let LSU use them, use LSU. There's so many connections around where you can use your platform for your advantage, you know, because a regular American or individual will have to work harder to market or get the connections that come easier for an athlete to get. So use that while you can and be smart about it and go ahead and use those connections to, you know, provide an outlet for your life after sports. Because see, my ultimate goal and I haven't shared this with anybody yet, but my ultimate goal is to be an owner of a team one day. And it doesn't matter what league it is, but hopefully it's in the NFL, but my ultimate goal is to be an owner of a team one day and uh, I'm on the right path. But <laughs> So that's my ultimate goal because I want to always be in sports. But um, okay. So. okay, so you're thinking big, but there's athletes watching who they don't know where to start. They didn't take the yeah. avid course to trade, right? <laughs> they they don't have the vision for some of these technology products, mm -hmm. but they're still playing at LSU. And the they're thing playing is, at Alabama. They're playing yeah. some of these schools. What should right. they do? Well, should, first off, they should, you know, talk to people because, you know, your network is your network, like they always say. And I feel like the more connections you have, the more people that will want to help you. You know, a lot of people want to be associated with uh, high-profile athletes. So if you're an athlete, use that to your advantage and, you know, connect with them. A lot of people want to help athletes. 
but they got to want to help themselves as well. And it could be anything. Everybody has a creative mind and, a, and something that they always wanted to do. Everybody has that. So it could be anything that can help, you know, their families out. You never know what it could be. But if they open their mouth and start, you know, talking and connecting with people that's, you know, already where they want to be, then that, that's where I feel like everybody should start as an athlete. Open your mouth, start connecting with people that's already where you want to be. Right. And learn from them. I think athletes sometimes look at it as a disadvantage that everybody's coming at them all the time. They can't walk down the street without people knowing them. Yeah. A little bit less with football because of the helmet. But yeah. still, <laughs> on the other side of that, it's yeah. only going to happen for so long because football right. is going to be over. So exactly. use it to your advantage. And, and, all I, and I always say, like, you know, since you have the platform right now, if you don't create yourself as a public figure now, when you retire, people will not know about you no more because everybody knows you as an athlete. But if you build your brand up to where they know you more than an athlete, your legacy will keep holding on after sports. No doubt, man. All right, it's a perfect segue. Social media and athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard forever, use your platform, use your platform. I remember being at a basketball camp, John Thompson, legendary coach at Georgetown, came in, had a deflated basketball. He said, what are you gonna do when the game's over? That was what his whole speech was about. And so use the platform has been a message I've heard for a long time. But at the same time, using your platform has never been more quantifiable than it is today with social media because the platform literally is tangible. Yeah. How many followers do you have? How well do you interact with your followers? Right. All the things that come with social. Now, I follow you on social, and you do well where I've seen other athletes uh, do well, Instagram, Twitter, but where you do well that I haven't seen as many athletes do well is Facebook. you got a, a Facebook page, yes. you sponsor stuff. You've done a great job early on in your Dallas Cowboys career, having even started the season, right. at really branding yourself. Right. Talk about social full circle oh, yeah. and how. What, what's your philosophy as an athlete on social media? Well, I feel like you should represent you know, your brand in all assets of social media. So I'm probably one of the only ones, you know, not many have a Facebook page. Right. But I feel We're like young, right? We don't but I feel <laughs> like you should have every social media platform because they all have different demographics That's right. of age groups. So you gotta cater to every crowd, not just one or two. So I feel like that's an area that, you know, more athletes can use to their advantage because they're leaving out so many people that they can have on their, you know, side on Facebook. Sure. You know, it's an older generation on Facebook, right? So I feel like they can use that to their advantage as well. But like you said, I sponsor, I do a lot of things with my posts and I just try to stay consistent and uh, you know keep a good brand and just to inspire people because that's my ultimate goal. Good brand, once again, some guys watch and they're like, what does that mean, right? And mm -hmm. I get it. So to me, you know, building multiple brands, I've always had this marketing philosophy, it's message, market, media. You gotta establish your message, you gotta fit, say what's the market or markets I wanna reach, you gotta pick the different social medias right. to get to those markets through. Right. What's your philosophy? How should social work as far as establishing a good brand? Because good brand could just be very abstract to a lot of people watching. Well, certain athletes have certain brands that they want to maintain. But if you want to have a great brand, I feel like you know they should you know start trying to you know be inspirational, um, use their platform for the good. Because there's a lot of people that look up to us as athletes, and I have people that hit me up all the time, just wanting to learn about trading. You know. Um, just saying how much they you know, look up to me. And so I try to use my brand and my platforms to keep inspiring those people to do great in life. And um, you know, it can t you never know what, it, how, you know what life you can impact by doing that. So yeah. I just feel like we all have followers and we all are hometown heroes wherever we're from. So we need to use that to impact our hometowns or the people that follow us. I love it. A couple more things. So coming up, let's go back to before LSU. You mentioned the AVID course that you right. took, but I'm sure you had mentors and coaches Absolutely. and people that poured into you along the way to get yes. your mind to think differently, uh, yes. basically be a little more mature than your age and be ahead of the curve now and where you're at. Yes. Talk about mentorship and coaches, people that have had an effect on you. Well, um, my grandparents had an effect on me um, just knowing how I grew up. I knew I needed to do something with my life because where I'm from is not, you know, as established as a lot of other places. So I knew I had to be different and create a way for me and my family as well, not just for me, but to change the way how my family is and the legacy for my family. So I knew I had to be the one to step up and that's what I'm doing right now. But um, that's, so my, my mentors with my grandparents, they really kept me wise because I was raised by my grandparents and uh, they gave me a lot of wisdom. And that's why I'm so mature the way I am right now to be able to do the things that I'm doing. 
but uh, AVID was a course, it was a college prep class that I had in high school. I feel like a lot of high schools should have it because it prepared me to be organized in college and also they forced us to read Dave Ramsey. So that's how I, I that's learned. That's my guy, man. Yeah, that's how I learned that's the basics. Guy. You know, I, they, they forced us to read that. So when I learned that, you know, so that figuring out other ways that I can make money, I was like, why not learn how to do it myself instead of giving it to people? So that's what I did. Wow. <laughs> well, I can't wait to share this with Dave. He's going to love to hear that. All right, last but not least, man, big picture. You said you want to yeah. own a team one day, preferably yeah, the, in the NFL. Yeah. How do you get there? What is the method to the, to the big dream? <laughs> well, how do I get there? Yeah. Sell my patent. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes and you know get a royalty for five to seven percent a year yeah sell it to like google they sell a billion phones you never know you never know man you never <laughs> so, know so that's one of my ways you know praying that you know i can license out my patent i did because i will obviously have to license out to every social media platform as well because i own the rights to the live stream 360. so if i can license out my patent and i have another app um recently that's going to come out that's going to um have influential marketing as well as um, advertising marketing so um, all in all in one where I can sell and do it's gonna be like a social media platform but being able to sell products and stuff like that so I have to let you know about that later but but licensing out my you know patent would be a huge step to get to where I want to go so my chances to license that out is high because it's a high demand product so that's my first step is to license that out and um, also raise the money to um, for my app that I'm doing for Sega, Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm building a game for Sonic. So um, that's two things right there that's going to give me that next level to be able to own a team one day because of the, you know, the money that would bring in from those two things. So hopefully, you know, they all go well. Like I said, I'm going to pray on it and just, you know, continue to do what I do. Well, I think what's, what's interesting, I'm going to give you advice and I'm going to kind of let you give them advice. But for me, I'm about 10 years ahead of you. What I've learned is the more things you can try, you got to go do it. You and I right now mm -hmm. could sit down for a day. We come up with the next 10 big ideas that are going to happen. Yeah. But coming up with the ideas and actually doing them are That's two good. different things, right? Yeah. You're doing it. And That's you're doing good. it uh, multidimensionally. And it's funny that you're about to play in the NFL and start your NFL career and you're not even mentioning that as part of how you're going to get to your big dream. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, but as I tell you that, Tell them how can they think big and establish a vision beyond football. Well, this is what beyond I gotta sports. say. You just gotta, you know, sit down one day, think of things you love, and think of things you hate, and try to make it better, no matter what. So if you can do that, you can come up with any idea that you want to do and things that you love to do, or things that you hate and fix it. So that's how I come up with different things to uh, create and also innovative ideas. So if you do that, I feel like you'll be well off to being able to come up with some things that you want to do and also just you know having the you know mindset to go execute but that's like I said in the beginning it comes with execution and uh, just getting the connections and your network so you just have to know people to be able to help you out because I feel like it is about a lot about who you know to be able to help you get to where you want to go I love it man you hungry oh yeah let's go get some food all right man thank you for your time yes sir appreciate it